$1,000 mark. That's something we're going to address on today's show. We're also going to look at where Ethereum is within this bull market and things have been moving very, very quickly. So is this sustainable? How high could we go? How long could it last? And are meme coins still the place to be? That is the question of the day. We'll address all of that and more in today's show. You can see a massive increase over here with the BTC inflows. Once again, the ETF inflows, uh, if you have a look at the histogram, big, big move up over there. So pretty significant. And consequently, you have Bitcoin following suit towards the upside. But we still yet to see that short squeeze take place, which will be initiated when Bitcoin crosses the $73,000 mark. So before we get into the show details, before before I build up the bias, I want to know from you, the audience, go into the poll section below, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, we are the fastest growing crypto channel in the world right now. And if you have a look underneath, it says, how long will Bitcoin take to hit $100,000? Please vote. Is it going to be less than four weeks? Is it going to be four to eight weeks, eight to 20 weeks? Or is it going to be many, many months before we see that $100,000 Bitcoin? Just to remind you as a percentage gain, it's only 30% away, 30% away for Bitcoin to get to that $100,000 mark. I want to know from you, the audience. So please make sure that you do vote there. Uh, and then let's get into it. Let's get into the show. Very, very notable increase with uh, what did we have inflows of 15.4 million yesterday and or the day before at least. And then yesterday, which just came in this morning, 418 million uh, inflows over there. So pretty significant over there, sending price higher. But what's more important to look at is definitely going to be the quarterly chart over here for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. This is what your quarterly chart currently looks like. Now, if Bitcoin manages to close this as a full-bodied green candle towards the upside, that could mean a quarterly close, which is coming up very, very soon. You want to pay a lot of attention towards that. There's going to be a lot of options, expirations, which are coming up soon as well. But if you can see this close above that $73,000 mark, the short squeeze will be initiated and it will probably expand a lot higher. And that means the next quarters where you want to see continuation off of that candle. Look what happened historically in the past. You can see the prior bull runs. Just looking at it on this high time frame over here, uh, we pretty much had in terms of quarterly returns from the 2016 cycle, it was one, two, three, four, five quarters of straight upside. If you look at this one over here, one, two, three, four quarters of straight upside. And this one over here, we have had obviously pauses in between. This is one, two. So could it suggest that maybe we have six more months of upside over here? Well, if we do, you would expect that that continuation with upside momentum should lead into Bitcoin crossing or hitting that $100,000 mark. So a big psychological number for the market. The other big psychological number for the market is going to be that all important $69,000, which you can see we're toggling back and forth between 69 and 70. So things are moving very, very, very quickly. We had much longer term time targets of where we expected the market to top. We can base these market cycles on different timing factors. We're going to go over some of that today. But as markets become more and more bullish, the dips become more and more shallow. That gives you signs, right? That shows you, is the cycle different? Are we experiencing a blow off top scenario similar to what we saw in 2017? Look at Ethereum over here. Also, we want to see what happens with the Ethereum close. Ethereum obviously has wicked all the way up to 4,094 and then come all the way back down. So will this candle expand and close as a full body candle? Well, only time will tell. We have a couple of days left. This is going to give you a lot of value information. If Ethereum closes back at those highs at 4,000 or higher, expect a big, big move to come for both Ethereum and the rest of the altcoins. Now, it's chatting with the Whale Room community on our live session that we had yesterday, last night, and we were talking about you know, all things macroeconomics, all things within the markets, and all things in terms of how to identify a major cycle top. Some of the signs and symptoms that I look at is when people that have never been into in crypto come into crypto and then they decide that they're going full time, right? So they end up leaving their normal day jobs and moving full time into crypto. That has already started to happen. I've started to hear stories of this. The other thing that I'll look for is I need to see Ethereum breaking out to new all time highs and completely outperforming Bitcoin. So that's one thing that still gives a little bit of hope that we do still have a couple of months left because you can see from this candle, Ethereum is yet to even make those highs. And if you look at the rest of the altcoin market, it's not looking that good, at least on the daily time frame. A lot of them are still down. Weekly gains are up, monthly gains are up, yearly gains are of course up, but 
we've been pulling back in the interim, right? A lot of fear still within the market. So the sentiment is not at that extreme euphoria where you expect to see major cycle tops. And that also adds a little bit of hope that we can see continuation. Now, how quickly can you expect to see 100K within the market? Well, if you look at Gert van Lachen, who's uh, one of the analysts that has this opinion of, uh, you know, we're going into wave five of five of the super blow off top scenario. So in other words, he's mega, mega bullish, but he breaks it down in a pretty scientific manner and shows you how quickly things can go parabolic. So the previous Bitcoin blow off top that we had was 2017. 2020, 21, we experienced two peaks. Remember, $65,000. Bitcoin then pulled back 55% and then went on for another peak at $69,000, right? Uh, a strange cycle top. It wasn't really the usual blow off top that we experienced in crypto. The previous time was 2017. Bitcoin literally rallied from $5,500 up to $17,000 in literally only 26 days. That is how quick it can happen, right? So the realized cap went from 39 billion to 67 billion, which was a 70% gain, while the price to market cap tripled 309%. So that's like moving now from 1.3 trillion to $3.6 trillion. And it won't actually require that much, right? Because we have these massive ETF inflows. If you look at the market cap of NVIDIA, NVIDIA has moved 0.25 trillion in a single day. So in order to get that 2.3 trillion inflow into Bitcoin, which we can see over here, what the inflows look like over here, we're going at about half a billion per day. You can see this is actually in the realm of possibilities. If you start to divide the numbers up and you do the math, it is in the realm of possibilities. So also looking at this chart over here, let's try and get a little bit of a timing approach. You can see once Bitcoin starts to break the all-time highs on the two-month candle chart over here, the Heikanashi candle chart, you can see it leads to straight continuation onwards and upwards within each cycle. Now, we're probably tracking more similar to the 2013 and 2017 cycle than what we are to the last cycle that we had, which was in 2021, right? If you look over here, once you broke above those previous highs, not the yellow line, but above the actual wick highs, price then took two, four, six, eight months to set in the peak, right? If you look at this one over here, this one was two, four months and it set in the peak, came down and then went up two more months to set the next peak. So two to six months, right? Two to six months is the name of the game. We need to first see a close above those big highs, which could come as soon as this month. Okay, if we do see that, then you can look forward to anywhere between two and six months, you want to be really, really cautious if we are following that blow off top scenario because it happens quick, right? It looks like this. Okay, if you look over here, this ultimately showcases once you break above those previous highs, it's just another viewpoint uh, to give you a little bit of an idea. This is now looking at it on the uh, monthly time frame. Very, very aggressive. Once you hit that level, straight blow off top. Blow off top over here, blow off top and We've already started to cross those levels. Timing wise, this is my initial plan. This was my initial plan. But if Bitcoin doesn't start to consolidate and slow down, then I'm going to have to change the base case, which had it marked out for between August and November of 2025. I also then noticed yesterday, well, this was a bit of an artificial over leveraged situation due to MicroStrategy, due to Tesla in the last cycle, due to Three Arrows Capital. Uh, these were big funds due to Sam Bankman Fried with uh, FTX and all the different leverage plays that were going on within the market. We had a bit of an artificial secondary pump that took price to $69,000. So I said to myself, well, what happens if we worked on the same timing cycle, but instead we moved it a little bit over to the left and we said that this was probably probably meant to be the initial peak that took place within the market, then that actually gives you a timing of the end of this year, right? So the end of this year, meaning nine months would be the highest case scenario, or at least the highest time frame scenario where I would be looking for potential topping signals. So 
The 100K mark might be coming a lot sooner than what most people think. The volatility over here still shows that there is enough in the tank to get price there. You can see that as per the BBWP, which is the Bollinger Band width percentile, it's now at 85 on Bitcoin. And on the right hand side, if you're looking at Ethereum, it's down to 69 percentile mark. Now you expect again in those final 20 percent of the run, the biggest moves to take place. So as the squeezes up above that 80 mark in towards the 100 percentile mark, that's where you expect those real blow off peak tops to take place. And that's where the market cycle usually tends to top out. You can see over here in the last cycle, we reached very, very close to the 100 percentile and it started to roll over at that 97 percentile mark. In the 2017 run over here, let's just move that up uh, next to my head. You can see the red bands printing over there, showcasing that Bitcoin went to extreme, extreme levels. Now, that's one of the signs that I'm looking for, right? You can see there is still gas left in the tank. So if you are worried that you're too late to the party, you're not actually too late, right? You're just on time. And you can see it when you look at this chart, right? You're just, just on time because when we consolidate at these levels, like seen in the price cycle, look at the similarities between these candles. Look at, pay attention to the candles, right? Green, 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 all green, red, flushes towards the downside, green, red flushes to the downside, showing immense buying pressure coming into the market, showing the psychology of the market participants that this thing wants to get absolutely sent and the dips get shallow and shallower. Look at the size difference between this red candle and this red candle and what happens next, absolute euphoria and ultimately we go up for one, two, three, four weeks, pull back again, shallow dip, and we go up for one, two, three, four weeks. Again, another big red candle to the downside, and then that leads into the ultimate uh, blow off top within that cycle. So when you look at the current price action over here, and we go up to the right hand side, you can see it's starting to look similar, right? The candles are just positioned a little bit differently in the sense that you have one red candle, another red candle, big buying pressure. Now pay attention to what happens next, right? If you start to see something like this, a big candle towards the upside, maybe we go straight to 80K, right? It could even happen this week, right? It's not out of the question for Bitcoin to put in. It, it would just look like the candle that we had a few weeks ago. Then the following candle, if you see it come down, immediately get bought back up and you have another wick, that's giving you a lot of valuable information. It's showing you that we're reaching the end of the cycle, right? And you wanna be very defensive in your game of how you play this because you are going into peak euphoria then. You are going into peak euphoria. Things are expanding very, very quickly. So I'll give you the pivot levels on the lower time frame. If you long, remain long and strong. The altcoins are yet to go parabolic. I think that's one of the criteria that must be met before we actually finish the cycle. You need to see those altcoins go parabolic. We can also use this trading system over here whereby I have the three, the nine, and the 30 moving average on. And this really keeps you sober-minded. It's super simple to work. As long as price is above the three moving average and the three moving average is above the nine moving average and the nine moving average is above the 30. In other words, price is above the short, the medium and the longer term moving average on the five day time frame. Then you have bullish continuation. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend and you want to continue to remain long and strong. What do you do when you start to see price come below into these regions though? If you start to see closing candles underneath like we did over there, that's where you can be cautiously bullish, right? That's a cautiously bullish signal. If you start to lose those levels and close underneath the green one and the yellow starts to roll over, that's a profit taking zone. That's where you have to start scaling some of your risk off the table and be careful and prepared for possibly a lower dip. Remember a lot of people were claiming for that $50,000 region, which would have been somewhere around there. That was a possibility, but first you need to see price action lose key levels. For now there's bullish demand, bullish demand, and you're expecting continuation onwards and upwards. So according to this trading system over here, it still remains long and strong. If you look at Ethereum, it looks a little bit different. You can see over here, starting to lose those significant levels. So take some risk off the table over there in the event that ETH rolls over and comes all the way back down to those low levels. Okay, that's your trend trading system. The other trend trading system that we use is the nine and the 18 EMA 
on the daily time frame, and I'm more inclined to follow this because it's quicker moving and gives me a much easier validation or invalidation zone. For now, they are crossed towards the upside, price is above it, and all in all, it's looking good. If anything, I'm expecting a possible ascending triangle to form over here. Remember, ascending triangles have bullish continuation, right? They are one of the most high probability plays that you can look at when looking at those triangles. You can see over here the triangle ultimately being capped into this zone over here. This is your triangle. There you go. You can see it. That's your triangle over there. So when that starts to break out, you can expect a measured move all the way up into the $80,000 zone. All right, let's move on over here. Guys, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, also, please drop your altcoin request. I am looking at the comment section. I see you guys say when, Casper, what else do we have? Uh, BlackRock, we'll bring all of those up. Drop and you ask Qcoin safe. Very quickly on Qcoin, is Qcoin safe? I think you're okay on Qcoin. I mean, I test withdrew last night. You can always withdraw if you wanna be safe. Uh, rather be safe than sorry, but I don't know. I think it's probably going to be okay. All right, uh, let's continue. Let's continue on over here. Okay, looking at Bitcoin with the same pivot levels. Uh, the pivot level is based on the RSI, which constantly changes each and every day. Right now, we're holding exactly at that pivot level. So price needs to hold above $69,000. That is the key psychological level to hold. It's also, of course, remember that prior all-time high. If this will just load up, it's the prior all-time high. There it is. So we want to hold above that clear level, creating that as a new base of support. And then we can see price springboard off of that and continue on up. You also have the purple horizontal line over here which essentially just uh, marks out the 200 exponential moving average I've done that for both the four hour and the one hour time frame and we're still above those levels so no reason to fear right long and strong we remain above all of those levels that's your one hour time frame and this one is your four hour time frame use those as a pivot level if we start to break and hold below those if you see something like this and we start to get back below Again, importantly, the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame, which also lines up with the nine and the 18 EMA on the daily time frame, that's a warning signal, right? Because in that instance, you might be putting in a lower high, at, in which point there is a good chance then that you see a bit of a distribution. Now, it would be a little bit uncharacteristic for price to do that. Usually once prices reach all time highs, it's very rare that you get these double top scenarios on Bitcoin. Same as double bottoms, right? Double bottoms usually break when you come in for the second bottom. It usually leads to a small bounce and breaks it. The same is true for double top. So if you look at Bitcoin on a high time frame scale, you don't really see these double top scenarios. If price comes up into this, probability is very high that you're going to break out towards new heights. And personally, what I see on Twitter or X is the sentiment is still pretty fearful considering we're at these levels. It's not totally euphoric. Of course, there are some euphoric market participants, but it's not totally euphoric like previous times in the market where we crossed those all-time highs. It's more fearful than euphoric, in my personal opinion. You can see over here on the funding rates as well, this agrees with me because it's not orange and red, it's green. So people are not taking out long positions. And I can also show you that on this chart, right? It shows you right over there with the white line, this is still shorts within the market. We have not yet seen the short squeeze. What is a short squeeze? It's where the short market participants, those betting on lower prices, close their positions, their bets to the downside, and consequently they market buy back and prices go long towards the upside, right? Because you're borrowing, essentially you're borrowing from the exchange to short the market, you're borrowing coins from the exchange, betting that prices will go down. And uh, if, you close that position, you market buying back into the market and sending prices high. And you can see the open interest is also low. Uh, spot has been in line with price action. I think spot dominates the market and you should trade in line with spot and not in line with leverage if you're a longer term trader, right? Trade in line with the orange line and not the white line. Okay. He has the level to reclaim. We've reclaimed it. We could potentially come back in one more time to successfully retest that level. Something like that into the 68K level will look really, really good. So if prices do come down in between 67 and $68,000, view that as an opportunity. Now, I don't talk here in riddles. A lot of YouTubers talk in riddles. They say, see that as an opportunity. What, what does that even mean? It means by the dip, literally, I speak 
uh, my yes is my yes and my no is my no. If prices come into the 68 to 69K level and they don't gain acceptance underneath that zone, right? That's a difference. If it gains acceptance and loses the red moving EMA, the red EMA, which is the 50 on the four hour time frame, the 50 exponential, then it's gaining acceptance below and then you go down, right? Then it's going down. Then don't buy the dip. But if you see it coming into this region and holding like this, then my yes is my yes and my no is my no. I'm saying that's a buy the dip opportunity, right? That becomes a buy the dip opportunity or stochastic RSI is probably going to reset in that instance and turn back towards the upside. Stock market still looks great. Coinbase looks great. We're still expecting Coinbase to move all the way up here to 354. Uh, we have a little bit left in the tank for the S&P 500 on the left, top left. NASDAQ on the top right and Dow Jones is lagging ever so slightly on the bottom right. We still expect that to hit our top line over here before any major profit taking. And consequently, we still have all of our long positions on the table. Very, very few of them are in the red. Um, and the red is marginally in the red, right? They're not too bad. We're going to continue to hold these positions over here. I'll update you because I'm inclined to think that this is more probable. Again, looking at the wick over here, let's zoom in. Looking at total three and what's happened with this candle, the dips are becoming very, very shallow. They're getting absorbed almost immediately. And I still think the max pain trade is straight up, right? I still think that's the max pain trade. All right, waiting for an answer on Bitcoin dominance. Let's move on. Looking at Ethereum as well. If you look at Ethereum and you look at the momentum oscillators below, Tony the bull over here, he says, Ethereum is flirting with price extremes that tend to lead us towards the final leg up, which tends to occur uh, in each bull cycle. So here's an example of Ethereum. Once those momentum oscillators crossed above, uh, this is the Fisher. It works on the, uh, it's called the Fisher distance away from your exponential moving averages. And once it crosses above that 1.75 level, that is ultimately the trigger for the next parabolic move. And this is looking at it on a high time frame on a monthly scale. You can see Ethereum has a little bit of a consolidation there, and then it goes into a blow off top. Over here, same thing, a little bit of sideways and consolidation. The market's fearful. They're not really sure what's coming next. And consequently, max pain scenario is towards the upside. We are now seeing the exact same thing, right? Ethereum has caused a lot of pain to a lot of people because it hasn't moved yet, right? Uh, anyone that thought in the beginning of the cycle it was better to buy Ethereum over Bitcoin have paid the price because it hasn't gone up as much. It hasn't outperformed Bitcoin and we're still waiting for that to take place. You can see it's still at those ultimate range lows. But the good news is that if you have been holding Bitcoin for the majority of the cycle, you have a, ma a major, major opportunity where this has been a long-term reaccumulation zone. And the longer the reaccumulation is that takes place, the bigger the expansion. The other good news is that the market cycle never tops with Ethereum distributing at the lows, okay? Ethereum always tops uh, following the reaccumulation phase and the expansion phase and only tops where you have those major distributions, right? So if you look over here, this was your 2021 distribution. That's at the top of the market cycle. The market cycles top when altcoins are going absolutely ballistic and we yet to see that. If you look at the Ethereum USD chart, so far it's consolidating, right? I wanna remind you of this picture over here. Look at this, let that be a reminder to you. So far it is consolidating at the key level exactly where we want it to. And soon enough, we should see expansion back above $4,000 for Ethereum. For now, that's the level to hold, right? If you do start to break though below Monday, uh, Monday the 25th, so this Monday that we just had, if you start to break below the low of that candle, which for Ethereum comes in at 3,422, then that invalidates the move, right? That's where you're probably going much lower. So Monday low is the level to hold. You can put this on your chart, right? If you want to put on Monday low, I think I have it on this chart over here. I can show you how it works. If you want to put on the weekly lows, you can go to this indicator over here. It's called Spaceman BTC. There it is. And if you go into the settings, inputs, there we go. You can mark over here. Let's just turn that off. You can mark over here the Monday range. So it will mark out Monday high and Monday low. It does it for you automatically. And then you can just look at the chart. So that's on Bitcoin. There's your Monday lows coming in at 66,439. Key level to hold. 
Here's for Ethereum. Here's your Monday low. There you go. The indicator marks it off for you. $3,421. All right. Let's get into the altcoin. So most of the altcoins are currently down on the day, but there's a lot of them that are pumping, not really in the high market cap coins, right? So if you look again over here, uh, this can just give you a bit of an overview. Look at the different sectors. Let's have a look at what's happening in the meme coin market. Okay, so some of the meme coins in the top 100 meme coins are up. Let's go to the uh, top 200. Okay, some of these are up as well. A lot of them are down. Let's quickly see just for an overview. The top 300 or at least 200 to 300. Hoo-hoo, Kermit. Never heard of these, by the way. Never, ever heard of these. Uh, what, they have another whiff. They have a different whiff. That's crazy. What is this? Dog with a hood. <laughs> oh, this place is ridiculous. Okay, cool, guys. Let's have a look over here. Let's see what's going on within the market. What is bouncing first? That's what you want to ask yourself. Okay, this is how you can help yourself with banter bubbles to find coins with relative strength. When the market is coming down and it slowly starts to bounce, come onto this chart. You're going to have to toggle between the top 100 uh, and go from, you can see over here, top 100, then 101 to 200. Pay attention to the coins that are, are moving up first when there is a market bounce. Those tend to be the things with relative strength. So here you can see Arc, Hive, Alephium. We are long on Alephium in Whale Room, right? This is part of our portfolio. Keep, we have Keep a DAO over here as well, uh, moving towards the upside. That will help you to spot an opportunity. Now you can bring it up on your chart. So let's look at Alephium, for example, because that was one of them and I happen to have it here on the chart. Uh, let's quickly see. Here it is. Okay, so lithium showing relative strength on the five minute time frame, very, very low time frame. But the point is, I'm just giving you an idea of how this works. Now, when you look at it on the actual chart over here, you can see, well, if it is going to outperform the market and the 15 minute time frame starts to outperform and the 30 minute time frame, then this could easily turn into a pretty big move because you have a clear rejection over there. So that's your range low. You have another rejection over there, which happens temporarily and then immediately find support. So that becomes a significant zone. Again, support, resistance, support, support, support. So will this be a range low for Alephium? That's a real possibility. If it is a range low for Alephium, then you expect continuation towards the upside over here, back towards the $4 mark. Now, why do you want to pay attention to these things? Because there's always a trade opportunity, right? If you have a look at this from here to here, it's a 50% move. If you simply just take that as a spot trade, you can make 50% on your money with a very, very good risk to reward. What is your risk to reward on this trade? It would look like this. Here's your risk to reward. So you're trading it back minimum to the top side of the range and your stop loss is below those wicks over there. That's giving you your three to one risk to reward ratio, which within trading is considered in the realm of normality. All right, what else do we have? What else do we have? Let's look again at some of the meme coins, guys. It's, it's one of the hottest topics. So if you look over here at Virtual Bacon, he says over here, I treat meme coins as leverage exposure to their official ecosystem. Pretty smart guy. You should follow him. Very, very good guy. When the layer ones or layer twos get hyped, like I showed you Alephium now, that's a, that's a layer one. Then the top meme coins rally even faster. Okay, watch these ones. So on if you're trading base, Toshi is the biggest one. I did tell you about that one. That's considered one of the blue chips. Phantom, you got Goat. Mantle, you got Puff. If you the chain is scroll, you're looking at Panda. Linear, you're looking at Foxy. And Near is Black Dragon, right? So if you're bullish on any of these chains and you don't want to trade it on leverage, maybe you don't want to take a Phantom long with 10x leverage or 5x leverage because you're paying funding, consider going to just buy literally the meme coin because if Phantom goes up, S goat will go up. S goat will go up a lot more. It will give you the same uh, the same beta or move that you would get if you were trading on leverage, right? So think about it like that. Play the longer game because you can see in a bull market the funding can kill you. Be very very careful. All right, let's go on to some of the more DJ things. Now we carry we we covered BlackRock quite a lot. I mean, most of you over here have made a lot of money. You've been in this from a very very low level. There's a couple of very positive signs over here. Number one, the holders have doubled. They went from 2,000 to 4,300 holders. 
that decentralizes it. It means there's less whales involved, less opportunity for uh, market participants to dump. There's been a change of hands, right? People that got in at $500,000 market cap started to take profits. New market participants came in and consequently prices have gone up. I see you guys are asking for Roost. We're going to bring Roost up as well. Have it right over there. Okay. Now what you have over here is you have BlackRock, which is the ticker on Solana. Remember BlackRock against Sol called Larry Pink, the pink guy over here. This is now in a bull flag or bull pennant. A bull pennant has a measured move. This one has a measured move all the way up 130%. So it's already played out some of that move right now. But if you can see this move up towards that level, if it plays out the measured move and starts to consolidate at this zone, it will be super bullish. It's already super bullish in the fact that yesterday it was at about, I think, three or four million when I told you guys. And we said $10 million market cap on the right, on the left-hand side here is the next target and made it to the $10 million target. And now it's holding and defending that, opening up the 10 to $20 million range. So if it gets into this zone, I would expect probably it will find a bit of a range like that. So if you can see price oscillate here, you got a bit of a 10 to 20 million, 10 to $25 million, I would say, range that will start to establish. And then it starts to look like these other coins, right? Like Lemiao, which was also one of the coins that we gave to you at only a couple of million dollar market cap. So my expectation would be that eventually it will find a base like this, like Lemiao, create that base later on, it will break out and then it opens up the 25 to $50 million market cap, which is what Lemiao has done. You can see it works level to level on these meme coins. And the truth is, this is your best opportunity to make life-changing gains is going to be on these meme coins. So you're expecting a new range to form over here for Lemiao, and you just keep playing at level to level. The growth becomes exponential. So I still hold every single one of my tokens on BlackRock. I actually made a tweet today, and we can go to it. And I said over here that I'll be buying more. If you look over here, and the reason why is this, right? Bull pennant holding the $10 million market cap. It's all over there. The contract address is there. Uh, perfect, uh, picture perfect. And this is the book you guys need to read. If you want to take your trading seriously, go read this book. Tom Hogard is a top trader. He trades uh, Forex and um, a couple of equities, but mostly Forex. He trades with institutional size, which is hundreds of millions of dollars, but he's private on his own. In this book, the main messaging that he, that he covers over here is that you want to add to your winners and you want to cut your losers quick. The masses tend to do the exact opposite of that. They tend to quickly take the profit like they, uh, you know what I mean? They think, oh shit, there's the money. I got to grab it as quick as I possibly can uh, because it's going to go down. And then what happens to the chart? It just goes up and up and up and up because it's showing relative strength. And then they think that they should take that money and add it into the coins that are already 80 to 90% down or the coins that are lagging. This is not a good strategy. Take it from the pros add to your winners and cut your losers quick. BlackRock is one of the big winners. So we continue to hold and add, even add. I add on other wallets over there constantly scaling up the position, $25 million next, and then we look to 50, and then eventually it's one more double and it's at 100. Okay, now the other one that we have to look at is Roost. Okay, Roost is on base chain. Now there was a lot of hype around this. What do I have to say about this one? I think it can go, but I think you need to be careful on how you enter into this position. I think you need to scale into this position in a dollar cost average approach, right? Which you can do because it's on base. All you need to do is you need to take Ethereum. So you need to add base chain onto your MetaMask or whichever wallet you're using. Then you need to take Ethereum from a centralized exchange and send it via the base chain network to that MetaMask wallet, make sure that it's that you've already added base chain uh, as an additional chain on your MetaMask wallet. Then what you would do is you would come over here and you would take the contract address. You, you guys will be front running me on this, right? Because I haven't got any of this yet. I'll be dollar cost averaging in. Then you're going to go through here to Roost. You need to make sure that you have the right one. If you want, I can make a tweet about it. Let me know in the comments. Do you want me to tweet the address to make sure you have the right one? Because there's a lot of of fake ones. It should be this one at 114.13 million dollar market cap. Okay. And you want to just buy bit by bit by bit. Why do I say that? 
because there was a lot of hype around this, I think a lot of influencers probably got um, some sort of an allocation to hype this up and shill it, and it just launched yesterday. It could easily do something like that, right? You could easily see big, wide fluctuations like this uh, before this really starts to get going. So it could fluctuate between $30 million market cap and current levels. Uh, and therefore, I don't want you to buy the top, right? If you buy 114 million and it goes down to 30 million, you're gonna lose 80% of your money, right? So be careful. Okay, you guys say, tweet it, I'll do that. I'll tweet it out. Uh, what else do we have? Looking at the comments over here, what else do we have? Okay, Larry Pink. Yes, Larry Pink, Larry Pink is the one. I think that could be the big one, the big one for this cycle. Let's see. Uh, what else do you guys want? What should we look at? Any large caps? Sui. Somebody says Sui. Let's have a look at Sui very quickly. Okay, Sui is showing relative strength against the rest of the market. We said still the same thing, right? The upside target over here, target one for the long on Sui is $2.45. $2.45. Okay, what else? What else? Um, any other things, real coins? Okay, Arweave, Arweave. We've got Arweave as well. Let's have a look at Arweave. Let's also look at Filecoin uh, because these are very, very strong prospects, right, for the future. Okay, also looking pretty decent over here. Let's see if I can consolidate a little bit longer on Arweave, but um, I do think that ultimately Arweave will make it to the 1.618 FIB extension. So let's quickly pull that up. There it is. 1.618, $58 would be the next target. Um, I mean, we said long are we into the yellow box over here. I can't really say necessarily that you should long it here again. Also, we did drop this in the Daily Candle newsletter, literally all the way down here. This was the first time when Arweave broke back into the range at 580. That's where we started to go long on Arweave. Let's look at Filecoin. How's, how is Filecoin looking? Okay, this one gives you a little bit of a better opportunity to enter into a long, but you need to be careful because there is a lower low over here on the daily time frame, right? Uh, the play over here would be expecting that it's just gonna play out like the rest of the market, which is this straight towards the upside. So this is wave one, wave two, and you're going into wave three on Filecoin. But at the end of the day, let's just close that. At the end of the day, this is a new swing low underneath the bottom of the range. So if you're looking for a long on Filecoin and you haven't already taken a long, I would say this would be your invalidation. This is what the trade setup would look like. Uh, let's just grab that over there. I'll try get a little bit lower. Trade setup would be underneath those candles and just trading it back to the top there gives you a one to 3.5 risk to reward ratio. And if you do get the move all the way to the 1.618 FIB extension, then of course this trade can become a whole lot bigger and you'll be looking at a move like that all the way up to 14.4. Okay, what else, what else? Bonk, Hemuel, you guys love the memes. You guys just want memes. We become the meme channel. We're gonna have to face reality at some point, guys. We're gonna have to move back into real tokens at some point. Please understand as well, we have fun with these meme coins, but by the end of the cycle, when the crypto cycle tops out and it's all over, I wanna make it very clear, these memes are all going to zero. Zilch, naught, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so please understand that you're playing this as a trader and not an investor. Do not become a long-term investor in any of these tokens. Okay, let's look at Casper as well. Let's look at Casper. I see you guys are asking for Casper. Okay, so Casper's losing that key level. It might come all the way back down one more time if you see something like this. Uh, you might get a bit of a W formation. So if I just zoom out over here, you might get a W formation like that. That would be another buying opportunity with a very close invalidation to the yellow circle. And then you can look for the reclaim again of 14.3, hold above that level and then higher prices, right? Casper would be a, one of the coins that I'd hold for a longer term play. That's something that I'm bullish on for the super long term for the rest of the cycle when ETH is breaking out to new all time highs, uh, when other coins are in price discovery, right? Coins like Neo are making new highs, Matic is making new cycle highs. This is one of the coins that I wanna hold for that period of the cycle. Um, okay, what else, what else? Also guys, check out in the link in the description below before we go into any more. Whale Room is down there if you do wanna join, the link is below. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is Evo. Okay guys, start getting familiar with these DEXs. There's a link below, check out Evo. This is a decentralized crypto exchange where you can trade leverage. Uh, so futures trading on a decentralized exchange. If you do not want to KYC, 
sign up below. Ran has a bet with them, so I'm mentioning it also on his behalf. He has a bet with them that uh, they'll get to, I think it's like 100, 100 million people. No, it can't be, not 100 million people. I think it's like 10,000 people and 100 million trades, something like that. Okay, so check out Evo in the link in the description below. If you do want to familiarize yourself with decentralized trading, I think that's one of the better trading experiences that are over there. And let's see, let's continue. Is there anything else? What else? Link, link. Yes, let's look at link because link broke out of those all-time highs over there previously and now it's defending this level. Is this, this is the question you must ask yourself with trading, right? Just to keep in mind, we were long on link all the way from down here at around $5. The break back into the range, that was our long trade. It met the top of our measured move over there. And is this accumulation or distribution? That is the multi-million dollar question, right? The pink zone over here is your key level of support coming in at $17, $69 to $17. We need to see chain link hold above that level, right? So any dips that come into there is an opportunity to scale in on longs if you're not already long. But if you see a consecutive series of lower highs forming, once it comes into there, it's probably distribution and then it's going to be going much lower. Okay. Doge, I also have to mention Doge. Where is that tweet? I had a tweet on Doge. Have I lost the tweet? Okay, let's just go to the chart on Doge. Doge is very, very, very important for us to focus on because Doge ultimately is the king of the memes, right? If Doge goes up, we know that the rest of the market is going to go up. So how is Doge looking? I think Doge is still looking fine. As soon as Doge can get above 19.5, right? So around that 20 cents mark, that's going to start to lead to the major breakout and alts are going to go crazy. Cool, guys. I think that's it. Let's cut off over there. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have an absolutely stellar day and cheers for now.